kind of legislator. I blocked trucks, I jumped over piles to get petroleum coke to test it. I was what they call radical. Shabbat <laughs> So, but he never shushed me or reduced my voice. He always heard me and valued what I had to say. And that is what is missing right now, as we fight so hard to lead our country with compassion, as we fight so hard to bring back the light that ignite hope and possibility. As we dress our children, and I am a mother, Hassan, like as I dress my children for school, and all of us have these moments where we're looking at our kids, it's usually in the morning. We fight so hard so they, they don't feel the same hurt and rejection we all feel today at this moment the pain of not feeling like we belong. We all must fight against racism, anti-blackness, Islamophobia, homophobia, xenophobia, anti-Semitism, sexism, you name it, because we all know the same very people who promote this type of hate are the same in itself. They dehumanize and want power over all of us and use fear to justify it. Congressman Dingle opened hearts. One of the things he said in August 2017, he said, I signed up to fight Nazis 73 years ago, and I'll do it again if I have to, against hatred, bigotry, and fascism should, I, should have no place in our country. Much of the lens that shapes the person I am today is from my African American teachers, my neighbors who taught me the truth about pain of, of oppression. I grew up in some of the most beautiful, blackest communities in the country. <laughs> all of which is still embedded, in, all of which, in so many things in oppression, all of which is embedded, the oppression and the structures all around us at all different levels of government. Now, you mix up all of that with a little bit of Palestinian roots. So 
people shouldn't have to wait years until we pass Medicare for All or $50 minimum wage increase to get access to health care, to get a good paying job. So they need to be able to come in and say, this is what's going on in my life, how can I help you? Because the power of picking up that phone, the power of the letter, the power to convene as a member of Congress can be transformative. Getting outside as they're protesting, as events are inside, me standing with my general motor workers, me jumping over piles, getting patrol and pull, me blocking semi trucks coming to my neighborhood, as an elected person, elevates to the voices of our residents. And these service centers are at the core of staying rooted in the community that elected me. So my first bill, the next week is going to be introduced, it's called Justice for All Civil Rights Act. It will transform lives. Our country needs to stop catering to the CEOs and the corporations that discriminate and hide behind. It's not intentional. Oh my God, Jenna Lewin. There is that justice for all will only require that if we can show that the policy in itself is hurting people on the ground, like car insurance redlining, banks overwhelming and denying people of color, loans, inequity and education funding across this country. That should be enough to say they're violating our civil rights. And it gets back to the core of the Civil Rights of 64. It does. Where the conservative courts today became it, made it much, much harder for us to get into the courts. That wasn't the intention of the 64 Act. And we're going to change it, and it stops now. Now, thank you. So staying rooted in my community and connected with the challenges we are facing at home will keep me grounded. I will carry you, my brothers and sisters, with me always. But I ask you to carry me as well. They will come after me, and they already have. Because so many, my mere existence as an outspoken woman of color, that I can't be bought, scares them so much. But I know, just like before, together we're going to become stronger, and will achieve what some would deem impossible. When those in power try to silence us, overpower us with pollution, economic injustices, poverty, hate, bigotry, we'll fight together and we'll win and become stronger afterwards. I am honored to be representing a community that raised me. Sometimes I think, Alhamdulillah, I grew up in Detroit because it made me a better Muslim mom. It did. I didn't grow up seeing everybody that looked the same like me. I grew up with people that were oppressed before my Palestinian family in Israel did. I grew up with people that understood what real oppression and segregation and hate felt like. And so much of that is what made me want to run in the first place and made me want to show them the love and admiration that they deserve every single day. I'm so honored to be serving the community that raised me. And you think about it, Michelle, brothers and sisters, a girl from Southwest Detroit didn't speak English when I started school. Michelle, I'm the eldest of 14 children, see Michelle. And now I am a United States Congresswoman.
and I have those. This is a woman that when she sees somebody on the corner asking for money, she goes, Mama Haram, I wonder what happened to him. She doesn't judge. She doesn't put any kind of labels on him or her. And this is the same woman that after Trump won, had the hijab on in the supermarket, and somebody yelled at her and said, take it off. He won, he said, take it off. And she beautifully responded, you don't understand. Jesus was born in my country, in Palestine. Thank you.